Thanks for joining me in this next video, guys. Today we're going to talk about the federal government's involvement with the church. So here we have an article that I actually saw on Daily Wire, but ended up having to finish on IllinoisFamily.org. And basically, well, I think the title says it all for itself, how the federal government used evangelical leaders to spread COVID propaganda to churches. Now, I want to say something because I want you to think about it this way. I in no way think that it is wrong for a pastor to help someone. It's not wrong. If you want to take the information that you have found and you just can't parse it out, you can't figure it out, it doesn't look right, nothing makes sense, and you want to go talk to your pastor about it, go do it, okay? My whole thing in this is that it's not just the pastor's job to help you, okay? But, well, anyway, I just, that's where I'm going to leave that, okay? It's not that you can't go to your pastor. It's that it's not just his job to do that. He is a fellow parishioner. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> anyway, he is a fellow parishioner with you in the greater body of Christ is supposed to help you. You're supposed to help him. There's not supposed to be like this weird divide that people have gotten. Okay, so anyway, so let's read this for a second so you can kind of see what what I'm talking about and why I would lead to that, okay? So it says, in September, Wheaton College Dean Ed Stetzer interviewed National Institutes of Health Director Francis Collin on his podcast, Church Leadership, oops, about why Christians who want to obey Christ's command to love their neighbors should get the COVID vaccine and avoid indulging in misinformation. So, just really quickly, um, Christ's command to love your neighbor goes both ways. If my neighbor can't take the vaccine because it would kill them, and there's lots of those people too, then loving my neighbor is not shaming them for not taking this vaccine. On the same token, if my neighbor needs this vaccine because they are older and it could possibly save their life from this unknown disease that we didn't know anything about, and my neighbor is getting very upset, okay, it is possible that telling them to take the vaccine is the right thing to do. I am for being able to make your own choice. That is what the Bible constantly harps on, just, just all the time. You choose the God that you say. You choose what you do in your relationship with God. You like all of these important things you have to choose. Okay, you have to be a thinking, thoughtful person to make that choice. So on the very first, they're taking scripture and twisting it around and acting like you the only way to love your neighbor is to take the vaccine. And that is a big problem. Okay. For those not familiar with Stetzer, he's not just a religious liberal arts professor. <gasps> Ooh, excuse me. And this wasn't just another dime a dozen pastorly podcast. He has some titles in the evangelical world. He's an executive. He is the executive director of the Billy Graham Center, editor in chief of Outreach Media Group, previously an editor at Christianity Today, and, and uh, currently executive director at Lifeway. So this is another, this right here is also another reason why I do not get too involved in all of these sort of like Christian books, Christian this, Christian that, because a lot of times they will have people involved who just want to push one narrative that is other than choice, okay? In short, when it comes to leveraging high evangelical offices to influence everyday Christians, arguably no one is better positioned than Ed Stetzer. You may not know his name, but if you're a church-going Protestant, it's almost guaranteed your pastor does. I would like some pastors to chime in and tell me whether or not they do know this guy. They know his name or something. I've seen the I've seen the name before, but had no idea what it who he was, what it meant, any of that stuff. Okay. <clears throat> So during their conversation, Hollins and Stetzer were hardly shy about the fact that they were asking ministers to act as the administration's go-between with their congregants. I want to exhort pastors once again. Let's see. Let me try and do this. 
I want to exhort pastors once again to try to use your credibility with your flock to put forward the public health measures that we know can work. Collins said, Stetzer replied that he sometimes hears from ministers who don't feel comfortable preaching about COVID vaccines, and he advises them in those cases to simply promote the jab through social media. Now, on the, on the face, that doesn't sound bad, right? It just sounds like a pastor trying to give some direction to his flock. But if you really think about it, why should he go on social media and promote either side? Why? He can give you his opinion and say, this is my opinion. This is what I think you, this is what I'm going to do for my family. And that's what he can do. He shouldn't go on there and tell you, you have to, you should. Okay. <clears throat> Let's move on. And this is, this is kind of the nuance here. This is the nuance that the, that liberalism, as far as I'm concerned, the devil has when he tries to infiltrate something. You're just helping people. It's just to help people. Just help people. Like, well, helping people is leaving them alone, letting them do their research, letting them ask who they trust, and then going forward and letting them make their decision. That's helping people. Not telling them what to do. So, where was I? Sorry, I get I get really, okay. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, I just got totally lost. Uh... So they don't want you to, to think that something could happen. So here's one thing that was, I saw a lot of, I heard a lot of Christians talk about and I saw a lot on Christian blogs. It may seem strange given the evidence now emerging of NIH funded gain of function research in Wuhan to hear a church leader instruct, instruct Christians to repent, repent for the sin of discussing the plausible supposition that the virus had escaped from a Chinese laboratory. This is more, don't think that way. Okay, you should be able to discuss whatever little thing that's going on out here without the, without, without a pastor telling you, well, that's just silliness. You don't need to think about it. He should at least be like, well, why do you think that's true? And all this stuff, right? People, each person you talk to is going to have their own opinion about this. As soon as I heard where this came from, <laughs> and as soon as I realized where it came from, I'm like, okay, so this was something that they were messing with, created. It was either released on purpose or released on accident. This is not like a naturally occurring thing. And now it's out here. That's what happens whenever you start messing around with viruses. You start messing with stuff. Stuff is going to get out eventually. Life uh, finds a way in another, you know. <laughs> so let's, let's continue. This is especially true as it doesn't take any great level of spiritual discernment, just plain common sense, to look at the fact that COVID first emerged in a city with a virology institute that specializes in novel coronaviruses and realize it wasn't an explanation that should be set aside too easily. So this is what I'm saying. A lot of times, instead of just trying to get, instead of just talking to people and try and walk them through something, try and encourage them to think for themselves, try and encourage them to look out something else and let them come to a conclusion. A lot of times what is being encouraged through these, for through people like this in the church is don't, don't help your people think it through. Just give them facts to believe. And that's not right. You're not, that's not what you're supposed to do. Okay. The only time a pastor or anybody should be telling you this is what it is. And that's just how it is it's in the Bible, in realities of life, right? You want, and even then what should happen with those is that you should help people see how it is true. It's not, it's not supposed to be just listen to me, <laughs> but that's what these guys want. So he went on a live stream talking about it. Um, this, and all of this is just sort of like what Stetzer has done, who he's worked for, how he's not very conservative at all. He's more of a, he's more, he's a liberal basically. And then other people that he worked with here. But this to me just sort of, it emphasizes something I see a lot in like with older people or with people who have just been in church like their whole lives and they don't know anything else. It is possible for a preacher or somebody to, to have the wrong thought process to be wrong. Okay. And the only way you're going to know if that's true 
is if you yourself are in your Bible, reading, studying, letting the Holy Spirit teach you. Because it says in the Bible, the Holy Spirit is your teacher. A pastor, so in the analogy, this is how I see it, okay? So in the analogy of God is our shepherd, I'm, I'm a sheep. A pastor is a sheep dog. He can't be a human in that analogy because it would equal him to Christ and he's not equal to Christ. So he's a sheep dog. We're the shepherd. He's maybe, I don't want to say closer because even in, even then the shepherds slept with their sheep. So <clears throat> what I'm trying to say is his job is just different. His job is to try and corral you into the, into the way that the shepherd wants you to go to bark at you, to remind you, Hey, 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 you're supposed to be going right, not left. Hey, 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 don't go there. That's dangerous. Hey, 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 like this, right? It's not the pastor's job to think for you. It's not the pastor's job to, to really comfort you because basically he can't any more than like somebody else could. I think a lot of times the, the, the body of Christ puts a lot on a pastor that is not his, that, that basically is the Holy Spirit's to do. And your fellow congregants, like right now, we have churches that just basically the, the pastor does everything. He visits, he does all this stuff. When what is supposed to really be true is that we have like these older women who get together, who get the younger women together and they all go together and visit people. Okay. A pastor, the reason why we have leadership is so we have organization, not so that we can be one hive mind under this one pastor, okay? There's enough give and take in the Bible for us to all be different, but all, all of us to have the same core values and get along, okay? But, and however, that doesn't mean that the core values or whatever is decided by the pastor. It's decided by God in the Bible. They've already been written. They're just, they're just there waiting for you to read. So for me, when I see stuff like this, the reason why God set that up that way, where he's just a, he's just a sheep dog. You know, I'm a sheep. He's the sheep dog. And then Christ is the shepherd. So the reason why God set that up that way is so that things like this can't happen. There's not an external leadership outside your pastor, other than God, that comes in and tells your pastor what he should say. That's not supposed to happen because it opens it up for abuse. It opens it up for, well, now the govern the church has just become a govern a talking piece for the government, which in American history is the reason why, well, one of the reasons why people wanted to separate from the British government because uh, for the longest time, even now to a point, the government and the religion were the same thing. The government decided what religion you were. And so they wanted to be separate from that. So here we have it happening, trying to happen again, where the government is trying to come through and tell religious people what to do and how to think about a thing, etc., through the religious leaders. So guys, just be thoughtful about things like this. Okay. If, if anybody's telling you, you have to have an opinion that is this. Okay. And your ability to say no is not intact. There's a problem because quite frankly, even with salvation, you are allowed to reject the gift of God. You shouldn't but you are allowed to. He built in free will where you are allowed to do that. So if I can reject the most important thing in the whole world, more important than anything, I should be able to reject this or anything else. Okay. And this is, I'm not saying this is how all of Christianity or every Christian thinks about this, but this is how I think about this. This is the government sliding in through what they, you know, what I consider to be the back way, trying to get the churches to do what they want. And, uh, it, they're not even, they're being rather obvious about it now. So anyway, don't let them do that guys. Remember to pray and read your Bible today. And again, pastors aren't bad. Pastors are just men trying to do their best at their job that they're doing. Okay. So I'll see you in the next one. Remember to pray and read your Bible. Thanks for joining me. Let me know down in the comments what you think, and I'll see you in the next one.